Hello, my name is Arcuria Todd, and the purpose of this video is to express the goodness of God for an individual and that individual's dating relationship. The content is based on the book, My Testimony, how God used the pain of my dating relationship to get my attention and have me return to Him. For a copy of the book, visit Amazon.com. For a free copy of the workbook, email me at kinsmanredeemer41 at gmail.com. The video is such that there will be an assessment question. Feel free to pause the video, answer the question for yourself before continuing on with the lesson. This week's lesson is taken from Chapter 8, My Lack of Boundaries. Question number one. Now that you understand boundaries, how will you respond when your companion does not want to do what you want him to do? Since I have come to understand my boundaries and the role they play in my life, I am thankful and grateful for my dating experience because now I have found wisdom which is more precious than choice gold. On Wednesday night, I would want to go hear the spoken word or take swing out dance lessons or go to a health expo but Charles wouldn't want to go for whatever reason, and I would get pissed. I didn't understand why he wouldn't want to go to these fun places with me. It seemed that mostly what he wanted to do was have sex, and don't get me wrong, it, at the time, it was the best sex I had ever had, so I wasn't complaining about the sex. It was the lack of activity outside the bedroom that I missed. Never having been a sexual person, I wanted more and needed more from a relationship. I would ask, what else you got? There had to be more, more than sex, I mean. Well, what I learned about my boundary problem was that it was my desire, my want to have him go with me, and only I am responsible for my want. I can't control what he does with his time. If he chooses to go with me, then that is his choice. If not, that's okay as well. I can't make a person do something he doesn't want to do. I must respect his want, or else I am trying to control him. Question number one. Now that you understand boundaries, how will you respond when your companion does not want to do what you want him to do? Grant your companion freedom in the same way God grants us freedom without nagging or pressuring. And take responsibility for your wants. Don't make your companion responsible for your desires. Question number two. Do you give your mate the freedom to tell you no? I see now that I had a problem with saying no and hearing no. I don't want someone controlling what I do. I have to see things from that person's perspective, not just my own. Everyone has the freedom of choice. I have choices. When you force someone to do something, you eventually push them away. I could have chosen to go with someone else. I could have chosen to go by myself. I could have mentioned how much it meant to me that he go with me and still given him the freedom to tell me no. To nag him was just to make him resent me for the pressure I was putting on him. Question number two. Do you give your mate the freedom to tell you no? When one opportunity closes, it allows your mind to open to all the other possible ways of getting your desire met. Instead of controlling someone or being stifled, Realize your endless choices. Allow your mate to tell you no and ask him to allow you to tell him no. And keep freedom of choice a part of your connection. God closes doors to expand your options and possibilities. Question number three. Do you respect your mate's freedom and choices? Why or why not? God does not nag or beg us to do anything. He wants us to go and assemble together but he doesn't nag us or make us go. God gives us choices. Since I am made in his likeness and I am his child, it is out of order to not respect someone else's freedom and choices. I would certainly want that other person to respect my freedom and choices when I don't want to do something or go somewhere. Question number three. Do you respect your mate's freedom and choices? Why or why not? Practice respecting your mate's choice. Respecting your companion comes from purposeful practice. It may not be natural, so practice, practice, practice. Ask him to do the same. Question number four. Can you express you would like your companion to respect your freedom and choices 
when you see him cross your boundary and try to control. Pronounce, you, can you respect my freedom of choices? I would like for you to. Question number five, based on your mate's choice, what can you do for yourself? I didn't want Charles dating anyone else. I felt since we were having sex and had been dating for a while, we should be exclusive. That's how my dating was supposed to be, right? That's what my small town Phoenix City, Alabama mentality thought. I couldn't conceive of dating more than one person. You dated one person in order to see if you liked them, enough to love them, and marry them. Why have all the other distractions? Well, those were my thoughts and feelings, and they weren't shared by Charles. That angered me, and I would break up with him over the issue, but I would soon go back because I didn't want to be by myself. I later learned that dating multiple people was his choice. I, didn't, I needed to realize and understand that was his choice and accept the fact that he wanted to date multiple women. After being told his dating preferences, it was up to me to exercise my choices. I could have continued to date him with sex, I could have dated him without sex, or I could have dated him as well as others, or I could have ceased to date him altogether. We both had freedom to choose what was right and best for our lives. I had no right trying to control his dating habits. I had a right to express my feelings about the matter, but that's all. I couldn't change who he was. I could only change me. Question number five. Based on your mate's choice, what can you do for yourself? Do what will make you happy instead of giving that responsibility to someone else. See this closed door as opening many possibilities. Oh, the possibilities. You will find and the freedom and fulfillment. Question number six. If the relationship is over for you, how do you express that to your companion? After experiencing the mind-blowing sex, the bike rides, fishing trips, meeting his family, going on vacations, working out at the gym, good, days of good and bad, I was ready for things to be over between Charles and me. I had had enough of his disappearing acts and his lack of commitment. All I wanted was for him to say it was over between us. What I wanted was for him to tell me the truth about how he actually felt about me. I deserved to know the truth so I could move on with my life. I wanted him to say the relationship was over because when I was finished with him, I would end up going back. I wasn't strong enough to make the breakup last. One evening, we went out for dinner just to talk about where the relationship was headed. I w was paying close attention because I needed to know. When he dropped me off at home, I asked him, so, do you want to stay in this relationship or not? His reply was, I told you, you just weren't listening. I thought about that all night. I didn't remember him saying anything about our future together or apart. He hadn't said anything. It wasn't until much later, as I was recalling that night, that I understood it wasn't his words I was to listen to. It was his actions. His non-commitment was speaking volumes. His behavior had told me all I needed to know. But I didn't understand at that time. I was listening, but I didn't like what I was hearing. I didn't want to believe what reality was telling me. I was only fooling myself. I was in denial. I was feeling distance from him since, hence, the dinner for it to discuss the relationship. Charles was missing in action. He didn't call as frequently as he used to. He didn't come by as often either. I realized now that sometimes it's hard for a person to break your heart with the words. In hindsight, I would have preferred he told me the truth. I felt he owed me that much, but I owed myself more. I owed it to myself to be real with myself and see things for what they were. The relationship was over. Question number six. If the relationship is over for you, how do you express that to your companion? Be kind enough to express that the relationship is not moving forward. Do not lead someone on. Treat him with honor. Ask your companion to honor you and tell you when he feels you two are better off as friends. Question number seven and the final question. If your companion is over the relationship he has with you, how will you know? I am sure when I displayed this unconcerned behavior with Kirk, he wished I would have just told him how I actually felt instead of stringing him along. 
how he was my rebound and interim. Eventually, I did tell Kirk I still had feelings for Charles, and we could no longer see each other. I remember how it felt to be strong alone, and I realized I didn't like that feeling. So why would I think Kirk would? He deserved to know the truth. I had to be honest enough to tell him, if I mistreated him, I can expect someone to mistreat me in the future. From this experience, I also learned to watch my boyfriend's actions. They tell me much more than the words could ever say. Even God's word tells us to be aware of a person's fruit. What kind of fruit does the guy I am dating produce in our relationship? Is he helping me become a better person? Or is he disrespectful, hurtful, and competitive? After I have told him about his behavior, does he remain unchanged? Then I have to accept him for who he is and not for who I want him to be. Question number seven. If your companion is over the relationship he has with you, how will you know? Don't be so in love that you don't see the sign. Don't fool yourself. Pay attention to reality. Heavenly Father, we come asking you to guide our hearts, guide our minds, to set boundaries, and to understand freedom of choice for ourselves and our companions that reduces stress in our relationship. Help us to be more like you in granting freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next week, be blessed. I love you, and God does too.